Hello again. Um, I'm Paul Beckwith, and I'm continuing my discussions on lightning. Um, in light of, uh, you know, a number of deaths being reported in India um, from lightning bursts in, in various provinces, India has a problem um, with over 2,000 people being killed by lightning each and every year um, at the moment. And uh, there was a couple new lightning records set recently um, and this was in cloud to cloud bursts and uh, one lightning bolt cloud to cloud traveled 709 kilometers um, and a separate lightning bolt um, had the record duration it lasted 16.730 seconds blowing away the previous record so I was talking about that at, towards the end of the last video, but here's uh, this is an, an, a different article on that um, on those world records from Severe Weather Europe, a great uh, great blog. Um, and uh, you know, here's a map. This is the area where the records were set in South America. So here we had in Brazil this one burst. Uh, extended over 709 kilometers, beating the previous record by more than double. And this burst in, this was in Brazil, and this burst in Argentina um, lasted 16.730 seconds, setting a world record, uh, almost tripling the previous uh, longest duration uh, lightning bolt. Okay, so these so-called mega mega flashes it should be not fleshes they were detected by the new lightning detection equipment aboard satellites in orbit around the earth a mega flash is defined as horizontal lightning discharges that reach hundreds of kilometers uh, in length okay uh, you know a lightning discharge in one part of the storm could trigger an electrical disturbance in, in other parts of the clouds which permits a lightning channel to continue growing and travel over long distances, especially over a front. If a cold front's meeting a warm front, you can get storms all the way along the front, and then th this sort of thing can happen with the lightning traveling from cloud to cloud over 709 kilometers in this case. Okay, and also, you know, this one traveled a long distance, but it lasted a, a, a record uh, length of time, the duration was huge. Okay, uh, long-lasting lightning discharges often happen in the mesoscale convective systems, uh, MCSs, which are large complex of storms covering hundreds of kilometers or miles, um, massive electric fields, charge separation in the clouds. Um, this is the, the record duration um, event, 16.73 seconds. And this is the, the, the longest distance event, the 709 kilometers. Okay, these are extraordinary records. Um, and as lightning, you know, it's likely that even greater extremes still exist, but we haven't observed them yet. Uh, but lightning detection technology is improving. And, you know, it's important to study these flashes from an engineering safety and scientific, uh, you know, reasons. So, you know, lightning is a major hazard. It claims numerous lives globally every year. Um, you know, dangerous lightning threat awareness and safety are important for workers outside, storm spotters, anyone who gets caught outside during severe weather. Okay, um, you know, and it blew away the previous records. I mean, the previous record was 321 kilometers with length, and the new record is 709 kilometers. And in time, 7.74 seconds, and the new one is 16.73 seconds. So, you know, some other records, one direct strike killed a record. The record number of people killed by a single flash of lightning was 21 uh, people huddling for safety in a hut in Zimbabwe in 1975. Indirect strike, 469 people killed in Egypt. Lightning set, um, hit some oil tanks caused the burning oil to flood the town, okay? Um, okay, so those are some recent records that have been set. And this is the Arctic. Why lightning strikes in an Arctic on Bizarro? 
Okay, so this was in 2019, August 13, 2019, this article. You can Google the title and look at it. But lightning struck 300 miles from the North Pole. Okay, very peculiar, very extraordinary, very unusual. Thunderstorms are typically a warm weather phenomena. The sun heats the air, it rises and condenses into water droplets. Cooler air pulls downward in the deep convective cloud. All that moving air collides and builds up friction and the friction removes electrons. So you get electric charges moving around and you get a charge separation in the cloud and uh, that causes lightning. Now, of course, the Arctic's supposed to be cold, but it's warming like crazy. So these thunderstorms are moving further and further up into the North Pole, and they materialized, and there were hundreds of strikes near the North Pole. Okay, very rare. It used to be, but it's getting more common because of the, uh, you know, the Arctic's warming. This number is actually three to five times, as, as uh, some papers have shown recently, and I've been saying this for years. It's not twice as fast. It's three to five times. Record-breaking heat was in the Arctic last year. Lack of sea ice means more water is exposed to the sun, more moisture rises, so there's more evaporation from the seawater, more moisture rises, forming thunderstorms. Okay, um, so the probability of this type of thing happens increases as the sea ice extent retreats further and further um, from the north. Okay, um, but very weird, very, very weird um, is that on top of there typically being not enough heat to form deep convective clouds in the Arctic, there's a limit to how high these things can build up into the atmosphere, okay? Um, around the equator, the tropopause, which is a boundary between the troposphere and stratosphere, remember all the weather happens in the lower atmosphere, the troposphere, it's about 17 kilometers high, so there's all kinds of vertical distance for these big, huge cumulonimbus clouds to form. In the Arctic, it's only seven kilometers high, so there's just not enough space generally for a huge vertically uh, structured cloud to form. It can only go up because, you know, these clouds typically bend over you know, at the top into this anvil shape, and that's where the trop uh, the the uh, tropopause is. You know, and it's a lot lower in the Arctic. So, uh, you know, it's a stable layer in the atmosphere that acts essentially essentially as a lid on these convective clouds. Okay, and you need a minimum distance in order to generate a thunderstorm, and that's so that's harder to do in the Arctic than the equator. So here's the North Pole. And here's where all these lightning strikes were detected, at 85 degrees north. Okay, so this is, uh, you know, really unusual, but an indication of how rapidly the Arctic is, is warming. Okay, but also very, very weird, even weirder with these storms is some lightning was detected uh, striking over the sea ice. This is amazing because the preconditions that are necessary to the extent that they're unusual in the Arctic, they're vanishingly unusual over the sea ice in the Arctic Ocean itself. How do you get convective rise? You know, what's the source of the moisture when you're over the sea ice? There must have been so much water on top of the sea ice that that could evaporate and uh, cause, feed, you know, be the source of the moisture rising and the convective uplift forming the clouds, forming the lightning. But this is, uh, you know, this is extremely weird that this, the sea ice provides less heat and moisture to feed a deep convective cloud as it rises even higher. But a storm managed to brew and there was lightning over the sea ice. So this is unbelievable. Now, of course, the drier, warmer Arctic, um, this, the drier, warmer Arctic has been burning to an unprecedented degree. So that's the question is, will these, you know, more frequent thunderstorms there, of course, will spark more wildfires, releasing more carbon into the atmosphere. Um, so, you know, it's, uh, there's lots of nasty surprises coming out of the Arctic and it's hard to quantify them because we don't have a great handle on all the feedback processes. Welcome to a North Pole gone bizarro. So another, another lightning effect. Now, this image here talks about the, uh, you know, so lightning, there has to be uh, a charge separation. 
Okay, so cold air, cold air, forcing hot air to rise, convection, the air rises, there's downdrafts, updrafts, you know, you get ice crystals as you get higher up, the ice crystals, there, there, there's friction created between the ice crystals, the larger ice crystals, um, the, uh, the, the, the uh, smaller ice crystals lose their electrons, to the bigger ice crystals, the smaller ice crystals are light. They end up being at the top of the cloud, so there's positive charges at the top of the cloud. The larger ice crystals that gain the negative charge are at the go to the bottom of the cloud because gravity pulls them down, so you get the negative charges at the bottom. That creates a voltage difference, so you can get a lightning burst within the cloud. The bottom of the cloud is strongly negative, so that, um, that repels that repels electrons from the surface. Um, so the surface becomes a positive charge and you've got, so negative charge, a positive charge, and you get this burst of lightning, cloud to ground burst. Or if the cloud is tilted, the positive charge is, is if it's tilted, the positive charges are over here that repels, uh, that attracts electrons to the surface. So you get negatives and positive and you get a huge lightning burst there. That's about 5% of the cases. 80% of the lightning is, is within the cloud. Okay, so, and there's huge, there's 16 million lightning storms in the world every year. 100 million volts is the, is the potential difference of the lightning typically, but there's something called super bolts, which are which are much, much more energy. They're uh, approaching a billion volts, 10 times more uh, potential difference or voltage and with huge amounts of energy. And this is a list of, this, of all of the deaths in various states from 2000 to 2009. Um, and uh, you can see, you know, lightning is, is a hazard which people forget about and don't pay so much attention to. Now, the science of lightning, okay, um, it's basically, you know, a big spark in the atmosphere. It relieves the charge differential. So you get the positive and negative charges separating in the storm, uh, causing a charge separation in the ground. And uh, when there's a lightning burst, it brings everything to equilibrium again. Okay, so, um, but, you know, there's different, um, a lightning, typical lightning bolt, bolt carries 100 million volts. Compare that to your electrical outlet in your house in North America, 110 volts. Okay, only about 30% of lightning strikes are fatal. The reason is that most charges, um, they don't pass through things. They like to, like, like if you, your wire in your house, copper wire, the electricity, the charges are moving on the surface of the wire. When lightning hits you, most of the energy goes along your skin and it can cause severe burns but it doesn't it spares the internal organs so 70 percent of people hit by lightning survive don't uh, take the risk different types of lightning there is something called dark lightning you can't see gamma ray you can't see it there's no optical there's no there's no heat produced there's there's no light produced Gamma rays burst from thunderheads without giving off heat or light, but the radiation is 100 times more energetic, energetic than a medical X-ray. Um, but these bursts do, they cause, uh, they do, they do um, diffuse the imbalance of charges in clouds. So they reduce the charge separation in clouds. These are definitely bursts, but you can't see them. Of course, there's lightning on Saturn lightning on Jupiter, Uranus, Neptune, so there's alien lightning. Ball lightning is kind of weird. Um, first caught on camera in 2012. You know, we still don't know exactly what it is. We don't know a lot about it, but basically balls form when lightning strikes and, you know, it might be because it vaporizes elements in the soil and creates this sort of plasma. Um, and of course, volcanic lightning, a lot of friction from the volcanic ash, you get lightning there. Temperature of lightning, 50,000 degrees Fahrenheit, five times hotter than the surface of the sun. Lightning strike, the diameter of a lightning bolt, maybe uh, half an inch, so, you know, a couple centimeters. Eight million lightning flashes hit the earth every day. Okay, those are just some of the, the numbers. Um, so I'll continue. Thanks for listening.